All right, everybody, please welcome Taylor Motter. Taylor is a position player for the Kiwoom Heroes. Taylor, thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. Love to be here. So before we get into your time now with in Korea, can you tell us a little bit about your baseball journey? I understand you were pretty good in college and then made your way to the major leagues and even played a little indie ball. Is that correct? Yeah, I've hit, I've hit everything. Um, I guess to start, I went to uh, Coastal Carolina in uh, Myrtle Beach. I played three years there, got drafted by the Rays in the 18th round, hit every stop in the Tampa Bay organization, making my way up. Um, ended up making my debut and I think it was 16 or 17 um, and hit three other organizations after that. Uh, f- actually, five other organizations went to Seattle, then Minnesota, then got picked up by Detroit the next year, got released, went to Indie Ball, and then went and played for Oakland at the end of the year. I got the A's hat on there for you. That's the only hat I, I have that. from the team there. I know you played with, with their affiliate there. And I wanted to play a little bit of your highlights here, just a couple of dingers here. And I believe you were also uh, played a little pitching as well in the bigs and a couple of games because you were pretty much everywhere in terms of position, in terms of the positions everywhere, but catcher. Is that correct? I I believe it was catcher. Yeah, I I don't know if I played center field in a big league game, but I, I played center field in a minor league game. So, And then I also got to ask you about the Tigers, because I understand that was a tryout that you went out yeah. for them. What can you tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, it was a crazy year. Uh, I had to go. To, I had to drive up to Lakeland to go to uh, open tryout. I guess I couldn't find a job, couldn't get it uh, hooked up with anybody anywhere. So I went to a tryout in uh, Lakeland and – Signed the next day with Detroit, and I ended up staying in extended spring training for the first month before the season started, and um, then shipping out to Erie for about a month or two, month or two. And then also one of your staples of the game is the hair. From all the pictures, you, you got you got the hair flip there, and I just wanted to show a little pro comparison here. This is this is you alongside Wyatt Russell, Kurt Russell's son. Have you seen this car- comparison before? Do you think it's a fair one? I think. I think you guys could be twins right there. Like, who is Taylor in this photo? It's like, I have gotten that one. And you know what? Surprisingly, I've gotten the Sons of Anarchy guy when his hair was a little bit longer, too. Mm. So I've gotten these two specifically in Seattle. Specifically in Seattle. Interesting. Just the Seattle fans, just they love the pro comparisons there? I guess. You know, they love the hair. It's, it's, it's just the town. It's a great town. It's a great place to be. Crazy. So moving now into your time with Korea, what was it like first arriving over in South Korea? Were you under quarantine immediately or were you there before everything kind of happened? So I had a crazy trip um, here throughout this whole ordeal. We, you know, we did the Taiwan for spring training. We were the only team in Taiwan for spring training. Taiwan handled it big time. Fantastic. I think they had 50 to 100 cases total throughout the whole island. And at that point, when we were getting ready to go to Korea, they were on total lockdown. They were getting 2,000 a day. They were getting crushed. So we ended up going back home for about a month. And then when we were, when it started getting bad in America, we were allowed to come back to Korea. So we came back to Korea. Supposedly before the date, the night before the date, they made 14-day quarantine mandatory. Mm. And the KBO and the K, I think it's KCDC, here made us do the 14 day quarantine still even though we beat it by a night so yeah we had to sit in the apartment for 14 days and quarantine out and you know get fat and not be able to do anything <laughs> you know you work your butt off all spring and at home to stay ready and then you come back and got to do 14 days in the apartment which stinks i hear you it's not easy i gotta ask what was your go-to quarantine content were you watching the netflix oh michael scott the office tiger king what were you vibing Man, with? You know what? Me and my wife actually crushed Tiger King in America before we left. So oh, we okay. all done with the Tiger King. It was done. Um, but, you know, I flipped a lot. I brought the Amazon Fire Stick with me, and, and I watched a lot of YouTube TV, YouTube, and Netflix. And we kind of bounced around a lot of shows off each other. 14 days, you can crush a lot of shows. Of so course, yeah. Between the three imports here, we um, went through a lot of them. The McMillions, I know the McMillions, the three of us watched together, which was – uh pretty eye-opening too yeah and speaking of your teammates i didn't want to talk about them we talked to jake before what's it like 
with camaraderie on the team? Do you have special handshakes now or is the language barrier still difficult? What What's it like meshing with players now in another country, you know, that you may not know, know the language of? So I'm very used to playing in other countries. I played in the Dominican, Venezuela, Mexico. I speak a little bit of Spanish here and there, but playing in Korea is a whole new ball game for me. So thank God most of these guys speak some English. You know, I have my translator who's with me pretty much all the time. Um, but it, it's, it's tough, but these guys are so used to having three guys come in. So they know their English words. They know what they need to do to try and connect with guys. Now for me on a, for me coming into the Korean atmosphere, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, is a little bit tough. I'm still trying to pick up words. I'm trying to pick up, you know, what people do day to day and, and their culture and everything like that. So it was a little bit of a shock, but it's getting better. And now you guys rolling out opening day that was on ESPN, one of the games. Can you tell me a little bit about what what's it like playing with no fans? Because I understand you guys also had some preseason too, so you had maybe a little more time to kind of get used to it. Yeah, you know, we did, I think it was five or six preseason games with no fans, which was... Um, you know, it, it felt like a spring training game on the backfields. Um, it was quiet. You could hear a pin drop. Um, you're in these big stadiums that are supposed to be filled with these 30,000 fans yelling and screaming nonstop throughout the whole game. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was looking forward to. So now to come over here and it feels like I'm going to have two opening days. I had an opening day yesterday, which actually started the season. But then opening day when they allow fans back in the stadium and everything's crazy is going to be a new opening day for me. Yeah, well, looking forward to that because I know the KBO is kind of prides itself on that crazy fan culture with the songs and especially the bat flips. You're the first position player we've talked to, talked to a lot of pitchers. But I got to ask, have you embraced that culture? Are we going to see you doing some bat flips, maybe a couple dabs or something? What are we going to see from Taylor Motter? You know, I've always been the hair flip guy, so I don't know ah. if I'm transfer to Korea, mm -hmm. but um, bat flips are huge here and it's something that you have to understand as part of the baseball culture. I've never been a big bat flip guy. I never wanted a projectile at 95 miles an hour coming at me my next at bat. So I was always a very respectful home run hitter. Maybe I celebrated a little bit, but I was never a big bat flip guy. Here, it's part of the culture, and you just have to embrace it and kind of enjoy it for what it is because they do it on base hits. They do it on doubles. They do it on home mm -hmm. runs. Anytime they hit the ball hard, even if it's an out, if they hit the ball hard, they're doing a big bat flip, which is great to watch in the, you know, in the replays of the games and stuff like that. Yeah, I know that the coverage here in America has been all over the bat flip. That's the biggest thing. So can we maybe see maybe a moderate one, maybe like a hard hit double, just a little little toss, a little hair flip, just kind of we run the bases. I'm, ho I'm hoping we can incorporate it here while ESPN's covering some games. That would be um, bringing America to Korea type of thing. I'd be all for that. That'd be very cool. So I, I did also want to talk about the food. How adventurous have you been with the food? Do you have any new favorites now? Maybe one food that you also kind of miss? So I'm a very adventurous eater, playing in foreign countries my whole life for winter ball. So I try everything at least once. Um, I've tried a lot of everything here. You know, last night specifically, we went to this really nice, fancy beef place, but it was in like a hole in the wall of a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But the soup they served was cow blood soup, and it's blood curdled in like a cube in soup. And of course, I had a little piece of that curdled blood. It tasted just like eggs, so it wasn't bad. But I just couldn't end up wrapping my head around I'm eating a square cube of blood. So <laughs> I couldn't really down the whole thing. I had a few bites, and I was okay with my decision of having a few bites. Um, I think the biggest thing I miss from back home is, man, tacos. Good, good mm. tacos. There yeah. hasn't really been a taco place in Korea. That culture, the the Latin American culture hasn't made it to Korea. So the Latin American foods that I miss eating at home hasn't really made it here. I was going to ask, do you have like a favorite taco joint specifically at home that you'd like to go to? Or are you more just kind of Chipotle is good? So Chipotle is good, but we have a place. I don't know how local it is. I know they have one in Tampa too, St. Pete, but it's called Taco Bus. And me and my wife go there probably twice a week just to go get some of these tacos because they remind me of Mexican tacos that I would get on the streets there. The, the best comparison I can find.
I like it. You're making me hungry with some of that. That sounds pretty good. The, <laughs> I don't know about, I don't know about the cow's hungry. blood. Yeah. <laughs> don't know about the cow's blood, though. I don't know about that one, but uh, I like oh, the tacos. You'll see, some, you'll see some stuff here in the soup. They have, you know, critters that are, they're still crawling, some seafood that are still moving around and wiggling. It's, it's, it's interesting to see. It's something you try at least once. And then if you like it, you, you don't have to try it again. Or if you like it, you try it again. If you don't, you don't have to touch it. I like it. I like it. And kind of along the same lines of kind of culture in Korea. I know Eric Thames was over there for a while and he was on their version of the masked singers singer. Could we see you partake in some more kind of pop culture in the Korean lifestyle? What are, what are we thinking? Voice lessons? We can get you ready. I would love to, to, to be a part of the whole Korea actor, actress, singer, whatever type of thing. It, that looks fun to me. Um, you know, baseball, we, we we're here for the fans at the end of the day. So we're, we're performers at the end of the day. Um, we love playing the game. We're the best at what we do period end. And we do it in front of a lot of people and um, we're, we're performers at the end of the day. So doing what Thames did and being a, a guy like that would be, would be fun to me. I would enjoy that. I would like to do that. So if I could break into the Korean Hollywood, that would be awesome. I like that. I hope to see you there with the hair. I think, I think you're in a good position for it. I love it. And uh, last question here. ESPN is currently, we mentioned this, broadcasting the games. But it is quite early for us here in America, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, and even later tonight. I know it's your morning now, my evening. But if ESPN wanted to move the times to make it align with Eastern time, could you see yourself playing at I don't know, 8.30 in the morning or like 11 o'clock at night? No. <laughs> um, I think that's that's – too much to ask for us mm-hmm. 8 30 is tough one o'clock is even tough for us to play you know we, we grind all day and and it's it's a lot more pre-game stuff than post-game stuff so we got to be there early to, to get i mean i'm 30 years old i gotta go hot tub i gotta get ready i gotta get a <laughs> massage you know i gotta get everything to get this body going in the morning but um i think there's some different ways that espn can play it out so maybe it's a little bit more of a prime time thing because to be honest there's nothing prime time on espn right now yeah what are they playing the 1995 world series the 97 world series 97 nba finals you know you could play that at 1 a.m they do it anyways when mlb's on Mm -hmm. um so i think maybe once twice a week you throw on a game at seven o'clock give people what they want they can have their dinner have a beer go out to the bar play a game at seven, rerun a game at nine or something like that. You know, you, you could get two or three games out of it and we could blow this up to a point where ESPN's getting a lot more viewers and, you know, throw some ads in there for some people and, and we can boost some economy going again. There, there's a lot more that can be done with it. I think this is the first steps and stages of it. And I'm just glad to that the KBO is finally being shown in, in America. And I see from Twitter that it's getting a huge following. It sure is. There's primers left and right, and people are picking their teams right now. I know I'm a Heroes fan after talking to you. So Good. I, I, I do have to say one thing. I'm upset with uh, the Durham Bulls. I've played with the Durham Bulls for a long, for two or three years, and, and they came out and said that the NC Dinos were their favorite team because wow. of the NC in it. So They really would. Watch, watch that. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. So... I'm hoping all my I'm hoping all the fans can come join the Kiwoom Heroes because we have a great team. We really do. We put a we put a good game together for our first game yesterday. We we kicked some butt and um you know we're a team to watch out for. We got a lot of young guys, a lot of guys who I think could be posted in America and and be successful there. Great, looking forward to it some more. Taylor, thanks for taking the time. Best of luck this season and hope you stay healthy and safe. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a good night.